Once upon a time, people could actually afford a home. That seems like a long time ago, but I'm going to show you in this video the changes that have happened. I think it's really important that people understand why this happened and why it's about to get much worse. Now, we've got to understand interest rates, and of course, we have to look at investor sentiment, and all of that will be discussed here in this video. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. First things first. You could see it plainly put, a generational housing bubble is on the horizon. New housing built now to meet strong demand may sit vacant in a decade. Demand reversal will intensify by the mid-2030s when the annual number of homes that seniors add back into the market is expected to be 40% higher than current levels. So this is the case here. This is just demographics unless something changes. And that's why I always say people better start having babies as many as you can. Look, what we are experiencing now is not something that could just change by, oh, we're gonna print some more money, or oh, we're gonna do this action, TARP type bailouts. That can't fix structural and fundamental problems. Let me show you this. You could see, priced out of Florida, more retirees are trying this Sunbelt state for size. What are they talking about? Alabama. And they give a couple examples. Some of these retirees, they're basically going to places that are kind of in the border of Florida, Alabama, and you could see they're getting a much cheaper cost of living and doing this. Now, why are they doing it? Well, of course, they cannot afford their expenses. The homes are too expensive, maintaining them, you've got to add on top of everything, your insurance and all of that adds up, it's too expensive, and you know that your services are only going to go up. So there you are on a fixed income, and yet all of your stuff is becoming more expensive. That's a problem. And so a lot of times what people are doing, they just move and suddenly they could live better. The same thing goes for people that are doing that. They're going to Dubai, they're going to all these other nations that are basically you know, more affordable for their lives. Now, you see the example of Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where they are having no taxes. They're saying, hey, build over here. Lots of real estate development, lots of business-friendly regulations. They're taking advantage. They're absolutely doing that. But it's the same inside of the U.S. where a state like Florida is trying to attract more people in. And as far as I'm concerned, places like California, New York, they're sending pushing people out because maybe they believe their legacy and they can have this and it's not always gonna be that way. So we have to watch these changes and you, wherever you live, you have to start to realize that maybe this isn't the best place or maybe it is. It all depends on your personal circumstances. Here we go. There are still states where you can find affordable housing, believe it or not. You can see the cheapest state nationwide was Illinois. Monthly median sale price of the home was $133,000, if you could believe that. Depending on the city, of course, you look at Ohio, Oklahoma as the second and third cheapest, um, and then goes down Michigan, Missouri, Indiana, Arkansas, West Virginia, and New York. So it depends, right? Some cities super expensive, some cities super cheap, but I think you gotta balance that all out with what you're getting. Because you can find cheap places in most cities, but maybe the environment's so dangerous, you don't wanna live there. It all depends on uh, your situation, what you've gotta do. If you gotta drive four hours to work and four hours back, it's probably not the best thing, right? You, you have to understand these uh, dynamics, but today we see people making the change for what reason? Why is that the case? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that with the cycle, the way that it has gone, this economic cycle, increasing interest rates, things have been getting more expensive because of inflation. And certainly that trend has been showing up in the data. Now you look here, limits on home water use in Las Vegas move closer to reality. This is one of the things that I really think um, a lot don't consider. And that is where you're moving to is not just about cost. Does it have basic things like water? You're going to be restricted on your water consumption. This is, um, you know, for most likely uh, for you know watering the grass and things. They could do that. But look at what California did with, you know, telling people, okay, we have an emergency. You cannot charge your electric vehicle. Like th these things here are a little bit too far and other places you can't even harvest your rainwater. I mean, it's just 
wild. So watch out, make sure it is friendly for all the things that are important to you, wherever it is that you're going. Fire sale, $300 million San Francisco office tower, mostly empty, open to offers. All right, it might sell for 80% less now, 80%. So what happens to all of those investors, all of that debt, everybody that's taken a piece of that, well, they're going to be in big trouble, it looks like. And this is not the only factor, okay? Because you could see with SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, all these other institutions that are out there that, they know, for the most part, they thought they were okay, but as soon as interest rates increased, oh no, then the problems came to light. Almost one third of Canadian home owners with a mortgage now have amortization periods of more than 30 years. So in Canada, it depends on where you live, of course, but in Canada, you know, the 25 was kind of the standard. Now that's being pushed off to 30. I've seen examples of 40, 40 years, as far as I'm aware, requires like some special, like you can't just go to your normal bank and get a 40 year mortgage. Um, but that just shows you that, okay, well, they can make the payment. They just got to stretch it out like beyond their lives. Like, like as if they had it in Japan with the hundred year mortgages, like this is, you know, you don't even own the home. I mean, come on, it's a hundred years. You're leasing it essentially. Uh, but that's the way they want to do it. Now, when we look at some of the different things that have been happening along with taxation, I think it's important to stress what's going on. Now, this is right from the IRS website. We are hiring special agents now. This is part of the criminal investigation law enforcement branch of the IRS. Okay, so hey, they've got criminal violations. They're going to go in, they're going to bust down some doors, and they have to learn to, as they say right here, Essentially, uh, use force if necessary, lethal force if necessary. So they're going to be armed, they're going to be ready to go. It's basically like police uh, working at the IRS. Now, I thought this was funny, and this is the reason why I put it in here. The special agents are duly sworn law enforcement officers who are trained to, quote, follow the money. Follow the money. And so the government is willing to invest a lot of money into this. They can put their cash into your cash, into IRS agents. They think this is appropriate. Okay. But they're not following the actual money. And all of this was clearly shown during 2020 when literally billions upon billions upon billions of dollars went to fraudulent activities. And they caught some people, a little, you know, a few people here and there. They were using their PPP loan to buy a Lamborghini. The guy was, you know, not too smart. He gets caught. All those things kind of came to light. But I think it was like over, I think it was, you know, over 100 billion, if I'm not mistaken, of just money that was just squandered. You can quote me on the, the number there, but that's not okay. And that tells us that the priorities are off. I know people love this because they say like, this is going to fix things. This is going to generate more revenue for the government and all that. If you only understood like the breakdown of, I've shown it before on the channel many times actually, but just the breakdown of all of where your money goes. I mean, it would shock you and it would make you sick actually. Now we need to tie this all together. This is important. Look, you could see it. The Bank of Canada considered raising interest rates at last meeting. They considered it. Oh, but they didn't do that. You see, because interest rates are on their way down, not on their way up, because they want to fuel the inflationary fire. This is the same thing in Canada as anywhere else. You see, the prices of real estate in, let's say, Vancouver and Toronto, two of the hottest markets, where the prices are so absurd, they just keep getting bought up, multiple offers on property. So they cooled down for a bit, but now it's all, it's hot. It's so hot again, you got multiple offers on properties. They're doing an open house, somebody makes a bid right there, says, hey, take my offer. Instantly purchase, this is, this is not okay. This is not okay, they are, crazy not to in increase interest rates. This is going to be very 
painful. The risk of recession is far from priced in. JP Morgan Warren stocks are set up for a bearish outcome as investors crowd into the top names in the market at rates last seen in the 2000 and 2008 bubble. So JP Morgan just trying to warn basically that this doesn't make any sense. I mean, we're not really doing so well and yet markets are up. One example of that, Meta, Facebook, right? Shares are up 170% in five months, despite virtually no revenue growth. You got to think for yourself, th this company was getting just beaten down by everybody. Oh my God, they spent this many billions of dollars on the virtual reality. You're going to go into this metaverse and what is it? It's weird. People don't even have the bottom half of their bodies. Uh, nobody's in there. Like it's totally empty. It's just weird. And people are calling it creepy and all these things. Um, but the stock is up 170%, okay? Because the stock prices do not reflect what's happening in the actual company a lot of times, and they definitely don't have any sort of, you know, anything to do with the economy. The economy could be doing so poorly, and yet stocks could be going straight up. And what is that one determining factor? Say it again, money mirror method. The money mirror method is basically looking at what's happening with liquidity in this in the financial system, comparing that to what's going on in the markets when there's a lot of liquidity. And again, doesn't like it's not like every day or every week or even every month. There's there's fluctuations, but generally you throw trillions of dollars, you're gonna make things like this happen. So that's my rant for today. I hope. That you enjoyed this information you got to know that this is really the key stuff as we look at all of this all of this connecting together tying it all together did you appreciate this information don't forget to hit that like button i'll see you tomorrow